Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to Be Pharma Wise. In this video, we are going to discuss about the principle behind the limit test for iron. See, this principle of limit test for iron is basically based on the formation of color and not opalescence like the chloride or sulfate limit tests. Okay, so here what we do is we uh, subject our sample containing iron impurity to thioglycolic acid in presence of citric acid in the solution made alkaline with ammonia and then we compare the color intensity in standard and sample we generally get pale pink to deep reddish purple color uh, in this limit test so let's find out how the reaction actually goes on and what is the basic principle involved um, in this limit test for iron okay so you know iron has two oxidation states the first one being ferric which is triple th plus three and ferrous plus two okay now ferric or ferrous whatever oxidation state your iron may be in it will be ultimately reduced to ferrous by your thioglycolic acid now what is the formula for thioglycolic acid thioglycolic acid it is oops, it is your acetic acid of which one hydrogen is replaced by thiol group so it becomes thioglycolic acid okay so this thioglycolic acid is reacting with our either of these forms so we will start with the ferric form okay so ferric form of iron i will take two here we will take also two here two moles of thioglycolic acid to give you two fe plus plus and these hydrogen ions will be removed as protons now these are removed as protons means the electrons which it gave away were utilized by the ferric ion to form ferrous ions so gain of electrons is a reduction so here ferric ions are reduced to give you ferrous ions okay and in this process what you will get is something like this now this portion is remaining and there are two such parts so what you will get is uh c o o h c h 2 s s c h 2 c o o h okay this is what you are going to get for the first reaction if you are starting out with ferric ions okay now you have converted those to ferrous so now your ferrous ions will again react with your um, thioglycolic acid so i'll take two moles of thioglycolic acid here now what they are going to do is they are going to form a coordination compound a complex with the thioglycolic acid and it will be called as ferrous thioglycolate complex okay so how you are going to write this complex now see and look at the molecule uh, it has this part and the proton part will set free so how you are going to uh, write the complex just observe the way i am writing so that it would become easier for you to draw it okay so what i'm going to do is i'll put this iron in the uh, center and then i'll draw four bonds to it now what i'm going to do is this ch2 ssh this s part will be forming a coordinate bond with iron and this oxygen will be forming an actual bond with iron so i'll write it like this ch2 sh now this sulfur will form a coordinate bond with iron and then this coo part is attached to your carbon so c o o now this oxygen and iron are actually forming a covalent bond and this sulfur and iron are forming a coordinate bond similarly i'll write uh, like this ch2 sh c o okay so this will be a bond and this will be a coordinate bond 
so this is how the complex forms and it is called as ferrous thioglycolate complex and it has pale pink to deep reddish purple color okay so this is the basic reaction going on behind the limit test for iron okay i'll uh, tell you a few more things now i told you initially that this reaction takes place in the presence of citric acid made alkaline with ammonia solution now what is the role for both of these see if i am adding ammonia solution to iron be it ferric or ferrous in presence of ammonia they are going to form their hydroxides like feoh thrice or feoh twice and you know these are forming the precipitates so i don't want my iron to react with ammonia and form the precipitates so what i'm doing is i'm adding citric acid now what citric acid does is it forms a soluble complex with iron now when iron is in the form of a soluble complex it is not available for reaction with ammonia so ammonia now cannot form a uh, precipitate with iron because iron is in a soluble complex with citric acid and this way iron is spared to react with thioglycolic acid to form this complex which is going to give us the required color and now in uh, sample and standard we will carry out the same reaction only in sample we will take our sample and in standard we will take our standard solution all other things just go through the procedure and we will do the same procedure in both sample and standard and then we will observe the color intensity produced under sample and standard if the color intensity in sample is more than the standard sample fails the limit test if the color intensity is less than the standard sample passes the limit test okay see the basic idea of limit test you have understood what you need to understand for each and every limit test in specific is its principle and it is very important which reaction is going on on the background of your limit test this you need to understand if you understand this mugging up the procedure is not a big deal okay you will get the procedure everywhere but you need to understand this part well if you understand this you are going to score good marks okay so i hope you understood the limit test for iron well if you have any doubts go through the video one more time and still if you feel that you have have some doubts tell me in the comment section below i'll try my best to clear your doubts okay so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for stopping by b pharma wise and thanks for all your love support and your nice comments so basically thank you so much i'll see you with the next video till then take care bye bye